I want to do a little bit of something, if you guys don't mind, those of you who want to stay on, by all means, but we're going to check something. Um, the Jewish Passover. I'm interested to see what day it falls on 2024. Uh, because it is one of those things. Uh, no, that's not it. Hold on. W-H-A-T-D-A-Y. Don't want what day of the week. I just want what day. And look at that. Evening of Monday, April 22nd. Tuesday, April 30th. That's not the Passover. <laughs> oh, Lord. When is the Passover in 2024? So let's do most important day, the Passover. And they're all saying April 22nd to April 30th. Ladies and gentlemen, the Passover is not no full week span. That doesn't make any sense. So the, uh, let's see. Hebrews years began, blah, 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 blah. I need the Jewish calendar. That's, uh, watch this. Let's go to chat GPT. Let's do that. Hold on. Then give me another session. What y'all doing? Don't tell me my session then expired. My section, my, my sections ain't that ain't never gonna expire. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh no, we're not signing back in like that. Y'all not doing that to me. Put me through all that rummamarug. Oh, I'm adding malware bytes. Okay. Uh, browser guard. No, we're gonna keep this for now. And there we go. All right. Just just adding that, y'all, because we got a bunch of other programs. I'm, I, I went to the geeks. Okay, we're going to restart later. We ain't restarting now. Got rid of nine gigabytes worth of extra, 19 gigabytes worth of extra junk. Gone. All right. Now, hold on now. Let's see if we can get this right. This is uh, Pirate Bay. Wake up. Jewish calendar. Passover, comma, 2024. Stop listening. Now, I'm looking for it just to say what day. See, begins before sundown on Monday and ends after nightfall on the 30th. Passover was only one night. The Passover celebration lasted for a week, but the night of the Passover, this ain't it. So something ain't right, y'all. Something ain't right, because Passover under the Jewish calendar was the first uh, full moon of spring. That's why it was there, the first full moon of spring. That's their year started, first full moon of spring. Now, people say, well, spring happens the same day on, yeah, but the full moon doesn't happen the same day. Do you follow? Okay, watch this. Let's do it this way because it ain't giving it to me. Wake up. First full moon of spring 2024, comma, what day? Stop listening. Well, look at that. The full moon is March 25th, which is sundown the 24th. April 24th, not April 25th. The full moon is actually the 24th. Now, hold on now. Let's prove it to you. March 25th, they count their, pay attention, they count their days of the Jewish calendar from 6 p.m. in the evening to 6 p.m. the following evening. Okay, so it would be that midnight moon and not the moon of the 25th, but the moon beginning the 25th. Do you understand? So we are at the 24th day of the month. It is the first full moon. So that's why it says 3 a.m. Eastern. Okay, first full moon happens the day before. And it's not the full moon according to scientists, it's the full moon according to the so-called geological observance of a full moon. Remember, they didn't have scientists back then. So it was the first full moon that was, now let's make sure because maybe I could be wrong. 
a lot of people out there are going to believe that, oh, no, it ain't until this, it ain't until that. No, sorry. This was the law. And remember, he died, not this full moon. We're going to go to the actual full moon. We're going to go here. And let's go here. And let's go. It was introduced in Exodus. First full moon. Wake up. First full moon. Stop listening. Passover. Uh-oh. Sorry about that, y'all. Okay, we got our Passover. Now I'm just going to do Passover. That way we'll get the first occurrence because we know it was with Egypt. Okay, we know that it happened in Egypt. We'll do this one, and we're going to go to Exodus. And it says it is Jehovah's Passover. That's what it was officially called, Jehovah's Passover. Now, it isn't for any other reason. I don't want this one. I want the next one. Why? What does the observance mean? They must say it is a sacrifice to the Passover to Jehovah, who passed over the houses of the Egyptians. Now, we got somebody like Dick Gregory when he was alive. He would say things like, if he didn't know which houses were blah, 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 blah. This was an issue of faith, whether or not they were going to have faith that he would protect them. That's why they had to sprinkle the blood on the door. The blood was symbolic and symbolic only. Okay, this is the statute of the Passover. No foreigner may eat of it. The same thing happens to this day. If a foreigner resides with you and he wants to celebrate the Passover to Jehovah, every male of his must be circumcised. We no longer have to be circumcised today. It's no longer a requirement. But these were the requirements. It didn't stop. That's why Jesus, in the end, when he was getting ready to be put to death, the day before he was to be put to death, what did he say? How I've longed to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. It was called the evening meal, or the what most of you guys have heard, the Last Supper. Not Michelangelo's Last Supper, but the actual Last Supper. Okay? They celebrated the Passover. That's why he had to go to Jerusalem and he had to participate in the Passover. It was a requirement. Well, he initiated, instituted what is called the Lord's Evening Mill. Okay, that is what we experience today. Now, hold on, y'all. I got to put y'all on pause because I'm looking for the date where they inaugurated it. Give me one second. I apologize. It's in the book of Leviticus, not in the book of Exodus. I was looking in the book of Exodus because that's when it first happened, but it didn't mention the rule or the law. It's in the book of law or the book of Leviticus. That's what Leviticus is, the book of law. These are the seasonal festival of Jehovah. Holy conventions that you should proclaim at the times appointed for them. So it had to happen at the same time. Pay attention. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, which is Nisan, 14, at twilight, the Passover to Jehovah. Now, he mentions that it has to be in the first month, on the 14th day of the month. Let's go here. Let's see what Numbers has to say. Pay attention. Jehovah spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month, on the second year after they came out of the land of Egypt, saying, the Israelites should prepare the Passover sacrifice at its appointed time. That time has never changed. It's just, it's no longer the Passover, it is the Lord's evening meal because Jesus gave a new command as to what was to be done. There'll be people out there saying, no, you got it all wrong. I don't have it all anything. All I did was put a phrase in and you'll see it. This is him talking. This is the scriptures talking. It's not me talking. And the Israelites should prepare the Passover sacrifice at its appointed time. Well, Jesus died on the same night of the Passover, which is the 14th day of the first month of the Jewish calendar 
at twilight. You should prepare it at its appointed time, according to all the statutes and all of the procedures, you should prepare it. But we're no longer under the Mosaic law so as to prepare the Passover and sacrifice a lamb and so on and so forth. There is a new procedure that was introduced by the Christ. So Moses told the Israelites to prepare the Passover sacrifice. Then they prepared the Passover sacrifice in the first month on the 14th day of the month at twilight. There you go. This is why Jehovah's Witnesses do it. What? No, hold on. Let me explain to you. I can simply just go to Luke, the 22nd chapter, but I'm going to do it the long way. Keep doing this is what I typed in. We're going to go to Luke. It's also in the book of Matthew, but Luke, the 27th chapter, I am your father. I don't want that one. That's not the 22nd chapter. So let's keep going. I don't know what chapter I'm in right now. Luke is so thick. We're all the way at the bottom, so I got to go a little bit more, a little bit more. Uh-oh, that's 15? Man, like I said, Luke is a thick book. All right, hold on now. We're almost there now. 45. Uh-oh. Let's go to the next one. Let's see how close we is. 22. Ooh-wee. Also, he took the low. This is at the mill that they're having. Okay, so this means my body, which is to be given in your behalf. Keep doing this in remembrance of me. You see, he instituted a new program. He said to keep doing this. Wait, hold on now. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians. Hold on, 1 Corinthians. We can go to the 11th chapter. This is the 11th chapter, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which was handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was going to be betrayed, took a loaf, bread, and after giving thanks, prayer, he broke it and said, this means my body. Symbolization, it, it didn't really mean his body. They weren't really eating his flesh, which is in your behalf. Keep doing this in remembrance of me. So remember him, memorial, remembrance, in memoriam. You guys see that in every year, they do a, in memoriam. He's asking us, to keep doing this. Now, hold on. He did the same thing with the cup. Also, after they had the evening meal, not during the evening meal, after they had the evening meal. That's why he says, also after they had the evening meal, saying, this cup means the new covenant. Oh, the new promise, the new testament. Ah, anyway, by virtue of my blood, which he poured out, pay attention, keep doing this when you drink it in remembrance of me. For whoever eats of the loaf and drinks of the cup, <laughs> or, well, whenever you eat a loaf, drink of the cup, you keep proclaiming the death of the Lord until he comes. Now, hold on now. There is a problem. There is a catch-22. Therefore, because everybody thinks they can partake, that ain't what he said. Whoever eats of the loaf or drinks of the cup of the Lord unworthily will be guilty respecting the body and the blood of the Christ. Well, how does one approve themselves? First, let a man approve himself after scrutiny. What type of scrutiny? Well, individuals have to be chosen to eat of the loaf and drink of the cup. If you are not one of those, and if you have to guess, I don't know, then you are not. I mean, literally, seriously. And only then let him eat the loaf and drink of the cup. It's a ritual, people. It is a ritual. It symbolizes something. Yeah, 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 you're not into rituals. That's Nobody cares what you're into. What I'm doing is I'm taking the time to explain why this is the most important day for me. Because it's the only day that we're commanded in Scripture to celebrate, to commemorate. Yeah, at, originally they had festivals that they had to do annually. Three of them, main festivals annually. Well, that stopped. After Pentecost 33 CE, don't you notice that's why they're not sacrificing animals in the Middle East anymore? Well, I mean, according to scripture, okay, I know they're still sacrificing animals, but he doesn't require it anymore. The scriptures don't require it anymore. Jesus nor his father requires such 
animal sacrifices. That's why the scriptures say he was a propitiatory sacrifice once for all times. He's the one who brought it into the covenant. He fulfilled the law. Did he not say I came to fulfill the law, not to destroy it? So he fulfilled the law. Thus, he made, hold on now, because some of y'all think that I'm off my rocker. Because y'all, some of y'all don't think I knows what I was talking about. Hold on now. We going to take a trip. We got to go back and visit a, a friend of ours. Y'all know of this friend. Hold on. He, 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 he ain't been long since, but gone. His name is Daniel. Y'all remember Daniel? Well, Daniel, ladies and gentlemen, we can go to the, I think this is in the seventh chapter. So we're going to do seven. And I, I, I don't know because I, it, it's, I listen to it all the time. So it's been a long time. Oh, no, it's the ninth chapter. Whew. Man, some of y'all know where I'm going. Some of y'all who know what I'm talking about know where I'm going. This is about the destruction of Jerusalem, the one that happened in 96 CE when the Romans came and devastated the land, destroyed the temple for the final time. There is no scriptures talking about, oh, it's going to be rebuilt, please. There is nothing talking about that physical temple being rebuilt because the temple that was there was only a shadow of that which was in heaven. That's why Moses was told to make it according to the pattern. Well, look at that. Data leak from AT&T, 70 million customers. Not our business. I'm not an AT&T customer. But why do y'all go here? I didn't ask y'all to go there. See, it just it took me way off my pattern. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Just so that you know, the Bible speaks of weeks of years, the 70 weeks of years. It says, pay attention, the 70 weeks that have been determined for your people and your holy city in order to terminate transgression, sins, and to finish off sins, and to make atonement to cover for the error cover, that's what atonement means, and to bring everlasting righteousness to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to anoint the Holy of Holies. You should have understanding and knowledge. So you should know and understand that from the issuing of the word to restore and rebuild Jerusalem by Cyrus the Great, pay attention, until the Messiah, the leader, there will be 70, seven weeks and 62 weeks, totaling 70 weeks. Seven weeks plus 62 weeks. See, Jerusalem shall be restored and rebuilt with a public square and malt, but in times of distress. And after the 62 weeks, the Messiah would be cut off with nothing for himself. After the 62 weeks, the Messiah is going to be killed. He did. And the people of the leader, the people of the Messiah, who is coming, or sorry, not, not people of the Messiah, sorry, people of a leader who is coming, Rome, will destroy the city and the holy place. And its end will be by floods, army, the flood of the army. And until the end, there will be war. What is decided upon is desolation, complete destruction. Why? Because they didn't listen. The people who were the ones who were the people of this leader, Messiah the leader, his people. They're the ones who destroyed him. They killed him. They used this, this leader and its people to destroy him. Ain't that something? Ladies and gentlemen, it says, but the Messiah will keep the covenant, that new covenant he was talking about. Hold on now. We just talked about a covenant in the last verse, and we understand that there is a covenant being mentioned here. That's what he was talking about. It says that he will keep the covenant in force for the many for one week. Remember, weeks of years. So what's a week? Seven years. Okay, pay attention. And at the half of the week, three and a half years is half of seven years. He will cause sacrifices and gift offerings to cease at the half of the week. Hmm. Interesting. He keeps the covenant in force. Pay attention. For one week. Seven years. Well, he died in 33 CE. 
Well, sacrifices stopped being offered officially in 36 CE, three and a half years after his death. Don't take my word for it, go look. Go look, no more sacrifices. That's what he did. He caused sacrifices to cease because he was the ultimate sacrifice. Doesn't matter what you believe. This is the case. This is history. You can't change history. Okay, let me explain to you about this history thing so some of y'all get it. Whether you believe the prophecy or not, doesn't matter because it already happened. Everything that I just showed you has already happened. So it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. History already documents that it's happening. You see how important it is that it doesn't matter how you view it or what you think or what your interpretation is? It's already happened. So you can't go back and change it. I'm going to give you guys an example, and then I got to go because this is, this is my night, not your night, and we're just about at sundown for me. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, the United States, when the Constitution was originally put together, the people got together. They had town halls and other meetings. They decided upon what their rights were. They had the Confederacy, the law of the Confederacy. They, they really wasn't too well settled with that because it was too, for the most part, you can even tell it was too military-ish. They didn't want nobody ruling over them. That's why they demanded a change. So they, they had articles of the Confederacy. Now they demanded that there be new articles. And so the people had town hall meetings, a bunch of arguments as to what was going to be, you know, uh, in vogue. So what's it going to be? And they decided on 13 amendments. That's what's the choice. That's what it was narrowed down to. So everybody voted on the 13th Amendment from the different colonies. And they said, hey, you guys, you are delegates. No, we all can't go to Pennsylvania. No, y'all going to take what we want to Pennsylvania. Now, hey. We're sending two of y'all, okay? We're sending at least two of you because if somebody goes and reports to them that we said something other than what we said, we're going to hang you for, for treason. That's how serious it was. You see, the delegates were messengers. That's all they were because it had to be unanimous. The laws had to be unanimous by all of the colonies so the delegates would take what the people of that area told them was the vote by majority vote. This is what we want. And they would settle on that, and their delegates would receive that nice little letter. This is what you're to tell them. And here, if there's going to be a compromise, this is as far as we're going to go. And you're to let them know that, no, we're not going to compromise other than that. And that's what they told them to do. Ladies and gentlemen, they scrubbed that history. And wouldn't you believe that they would have to do nothing but scrub that history? Why did they scrub the history so that they can maintain the control they had? Go back and look at the fire of the Congressional Library where all of the records were destroyed. All of the records evidencing these town halls. Now, how do we have proof that they had town halls and other meetings and that the individuals told the delegates what to do? It's in the preamble, people. It's right there where the people are saying Congress shall make no law. The very First Amendment, Congress shall make no law. We don't want y'all ruling over us. Oh, no, 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 no. We are going to tell y'all what laws to introduce. That's why they did it. That's why they said we do it, ordain, and establish this Constitution. So they were only establishing the first 10 amendments. The 11th and 12th and 13th Amendment, the people never authorized that. Congress did that on their own. That's why it took them so long to do it, because they had to wait until they were so far from the original. Because, you know, people got lazy. They were more concerned about raising their family, dealing with the Indians, dealing with the wars, the civil wars and all that. Just like now, everybody's forgotten what their rights are. Everybody thinks that they have constitutional rights. Go ahead. Ask anyone. Name two of your constitutional rights, and I guarantee you they'll start giving you some information, not knowing that the Constitution didn't give a single person a right. It was not a right-establishing document. It didn't establish a single right for a single person. Look at the First Amendment. It says, Congress shall make no law abridging the right of the people, and then it speaks freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of practice, freedom of... Uh, press, freedom of right to petition government for redress of grievances, and freedom to assemble. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the Constitution didn't give you those rights. You already had those rights. So the Constitution only secured those rights, made sure the government couldn't encroach upon them like they're doing now. So again, it doesn't matter what a person's opinion are or their interpretation of the Constitution because that's all backwards. The Constitution is not to be interpreted that way. Constitution is a contract. It's a trust agreement. The people are the grantors. It tells you right there in the preamble, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union, to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America, for ourselves and our posterities. Now, they were the grantors, pay attention, and the beneficiaries. Look at that. That's the agreement. There's nobody who can argue that because it tells you right there in the preamble. If the preamble was not supposed to be part of the Constitution, then it never would have introduced it. But they had no choice. The preamble was longer. But they got rid of a lot of the language that talked about the control that people had. Go back and look at the original preamble. So getting back to the Bible, many of you who are older, including older than me, you had those parents who were real stern and hard notched when it came to the scriptures. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact is we didn't actually have a full grip on what the scriptures said. Why? Because of this. Daniel was told to seal up the book. He said the book was supposed to be sealed. Why? Let's go to chapter 12 so that you can see it. And then we're going to let y'all go because, I, like I said, I got to go. Chapter 12 of Daniel. We're going to go to roughly verse number 4. Why? Because 4 is the verse that we need to get to. It says, but as for you, Daniel, keep the word secret and seal up the book until the time of the end. Right now, many will rove about and true knowledge not that junk, that enlightenment that you hear people talk about. Not the universe, but true knowledge. What did Jesus say true knowledge was? Did he not say it was God's word? Sanctify them by means of the truth. Your word is truth. Okay, so true knowledge will become abundant. True knowledge about the scriptures. True knowledge about the Bible. True knowledge about the time of the end. True knowledge. That's why the book was to remain secret. Well, the secrets are now being revealed in the last days. So that's why your parents didn't have a full grip on things, because they simply didn't know. And they've been a part of those organizations that have been designed and trained by government to keep people in the dark. Don't blame it on me. Most of what I know, all of you should know already. Don't blame it on me. My parents didn't keep me in the dark. And it's not like they allowed me to think for myself in the sense that I was smart enough to think for myself. No, they allowed me to ask questions. And they knew I wasn't the type just to accept no for an answer. No, it's not an answer to nothing. I've always said that. No, my parents took the time to explain things to me and then told me to go do my research. And I did. And then I would bring my research back to them and then we would go over it together, mother and father. My mother used to say something like in the time of the end there was going to be changes in seasons, and we we're not going to be able to tell winter from fall and spring. And I told her, where is that? And so I remember when I got to about 16 years old, I told my mother, look, I read through the whole Bible, and I ain't seen that nowhere in Scripture. Where is that written? And she would tell me she didn't know. And so when I got older, I asked her about it again, and she would tell me, look, I don't know. I just know it's there. <laughs> okay, that was her response to me as I got older. But let me let you know. Those are the conversations we had when my brothers and sisters were not around because this meant a lot to me. Why? Because I didn't want to be misled. I didn't want to be believing in something just based on some type of thing people call faith. I don't care about no faith. Faith doesn't run my life. I, ladies and gentlemen, I don't live by faith. I live by actual assurances because I've been through too much. So I've learned to trust the God that I serve because he does exactly what he says he's gonna do. I see it all around me. And so I don't wanna do anything to offend him. Like be on this computer talking about to y'all about other things when I gotta go because I gotta get prepared. So hey, the only day on this planet that I celebrate, the only day that I'm obligated to celebrate, and yes, I'm obligated to celebrate this day, so other than that, I don't take calls on this day, although two people called me today and they didn't know. So I just had to explain it to them, keep it short and get off the phone. But this is the day that I don't take any calls, don't do anything else. I did finish that document because I had promised it. 
and that was earlier in the day before this time and doing this video now, not work. Sharing information. Hey, you all take care. 29 minutes. I'm